there's a common misconception about the Higgs field. And the picture that's painted is, it's this sea of molasses and everything just passes through it. And the resistance it faces is what gives us this non, non-zero constant rest mass. You hate this analogy. I do. I do. And with a passion. With a passion. So let's, let's debunk this myth. How does the Higgs field give a rest mass to everything? Well, let's start by talking about what's wrong with the analogy, because I think, you know, I don't know if I would have been this eighth grader, but I am sure there are eighth graders who could point out there's something wrong with the analogy (laughs) right, right off the bat. So if the Higgs field were like a soup or like a molasses that slows things down, that impedes motion, and if impeding motion was what gave things their mass, then everything would slow down and stop. I mean, if you fire a bullet through uh, molasses, it'll slow down. And if the vat of molasses is big enough, it'll stop. Now, what's wrong with that? Well, a lot of things are wrong with it. First of all, Newton's law, Newton's first law of motion is that if you take an isolated object and leave it alone, it will continue traveling at whatever speed it's traveling forever. So, this would be saying that the Higgs field is in total violation of Newton's first law. That would be somewhat disappointing for all of those poor physics students who've learned Newton's laws in their first week of classes, and now they learn that, no, the Higgs field actually makes all those laws wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't do that. Another thing that would be wrong, sort of more, um, uh, more direct, is that it would slow the Earth down as it goes around the sun. It would cause friction, cause drag. Well, if you did that, then the Earth would gradually spiral into the sun and we'd be gone. So clearly that hasn't happened in the last few billion years. So something about this story is wrong. And more generally, you know, this story of molasses or soup or snow or a thicket or a crowd of people, there's all sorts of analogies that are used. All of them imply that the Higgs field is like a substance. And as we talked about earlier, a field is not a thing. (laughs) It's not a substance. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the Higgs field is, but it is not a substance. (laughs) It's not a thing. It's a property of something, maybe. And I can talk about what it does, even though I don't know what it is, Mm -hmm. which we will do in a minute. But it's, it's not a substance, and it doesn't slow things down. It can't do that because it would violate these laws that are very basic to physics. I mean, it would violate Galileo's and Einstein's principle of relativity. It violates Newton's laws of the even, I mean, the the Newton's first law is practically the only law which has survived from, from, from the the 17th century and is still true today, as far as we're concerned. I mean, we can't be giving explanations of the Higgs field that violate what are fundamental principles of physics, because then you just make a hash of everything and nobody can understand anything. So that's why I hate it so much. And, um, and I have friends who feel very differently, but I've made my case. And part of my case is, yeah, but it's not so hard to explain how it actually works. So why are we giving this cockamamie explanation? And the answer to that is, well, I've only got 30 seconds. And it's true. If you only have 30 seconds, my explanation will not fit in that. Um, so I, you know, I accept that that's true. And I think it's okay to give the, the wrong explanation as long as you tell people that it's wrong. <laughs> but we don't do that. So... Fine. If somebody wants to say the, the Higgs is like this substance that fills the universe and slows things down, but don't believe me because that's really not true, I'm fine with that. Okay. And one of the other reasons that it's a problem is that if it were really true that the Higgs field were like uh, molasses, then everything would slow down. Everything would have a mass uh, that interacts with this field at all. But but there are plenty of things that don't get their mass from the Higgs field that, that get their mass from somewhere else. For example, everything in this room. The Higgs field gives mass only to certain elementary particles. It does not give protons and neutrons their masses. So it doesn't give atoms their masses because most of the mass of an atom is in its protons and neutrons, which means everything around us, including you and me, get, gets its mass from something else, which is, involves the strong nuclear force. And it's a great story, which I tell in the book, but it's not the story of the Higgs field. So... How is the Higgs field being so selective if it fills the room, right? It, 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 needs, it, needs, it needs to be more of a story. So the Higgs field 
uh, is something which found, is found everywhere in the universe, just like any field. But it has a special role to play. Mm -hmm. And that role has to do with how it interacts with the other fields. Just to bring us back to where we started with for fields. Okay, so we talked about air being a substance. It's a medium. Uh, it has properties. Pressure, wind, uh, density, humidity. Those fields all interact with each other. They all affect each other. And indeed, if you're a weather forecaster, what you have to do is you have to figure out how they interact with each other and, and try to predict the weather tomorrow based on what it's doing across in the United States today. Yep. So the universe has a bunch of fields. They do interact with each other. That's essentially why everything happens in nature. It's all because of the interactions among the fields. And the Higgs field has a special interaction with many of the other fields, which lead to their wavicles having mass. So where does this come about? Well, a little earlier, we, I, we were talking about the fact that wavicles have mass because they have internal energy. And the reason they have this energy is because a wavicle is always vibrating. But we didn't talk about the fact that there's a direct relation between what happens if you have, let's say, a stationary electron. It will vibrate at a certain rate. It will have a certain frequency of vibration. The vibrational frequency that it has is directly related to the amount of energy it has and therefore directly related to the amount of mass that it has. So the rest mass of an electron is related to how fast, how quickly, how often a, uh, an electron is vibrating, which in turn is telling us something about a property of the electron field. Now, how does that work? Well, if you take a guitar string and you pluck it, it's going to vibrate at a certain frequency. That frequency then will create sound waves at a certain frequency, and those sound waves will interact with your ear and make your eardrum vibrate at that frequency, and your brain will then translate that into a certain sound. So the, uh, the, the string has this characteristic frequency, which we call the resonance frequency. And no matter how you pluck the string, you do it with your fingernail, you do it with two fingers, you'll get the same note every time. You get the same musical note because you're getting the same frequency. So... This is also true of the fields of nature. They have, each one has a preferred frequency with which it prefers to vibrate. And that frequency is then related to the mass of the corresponding wavicle. So the up quark has a certain uh, resonant frequency that corresponds to the up quark's mass. And the Higgs field has a certain preferred frequency and the Higgs boson's mass is related to that. So the question of where the particles get their masses is actually translated in quantum field theory to the question of where did the fields get their frequencies from? Mm -hmm. And that's the question for which the Higgs field is the answer. So how can it be that a Higgs field, that any field, can change the frequencies of other fields? Well, there's a way in which the Higgs field sort of acts as an environment for everything else. And let me explain what I mean by that by going back to the analogy of a guitar. You know that if you take a guitar and you tune it up and you make it nice, so it sounds great, and then you leave it in the sun or you just leave it outside where the humidity may, might change a lot, that temperature and humidity will cause the shape of the guitar to change a little bit and the guitar will end up out of tune in the sense that the frequencies of the strings will shift. So that's a general statement that, well, the environment in which a musical instrument sits can cause it to sound differently, can cause its frequencies to change. And this is also true for, for trumpet players or flute players. If they take their instrument when it's cold, its frequencies will be a little different than if it's at room temperature. So that's a general concept. And now when we look at the universe, as particle physicists do, again, it's a world of fields with frequencies. It's not so different from a musical instrument. Right? It has certain preferred frequencies at which it will vibrate, just as when you strum a guitar, you will hear certain notes and not others. Now, the universe is somewhat different from a guitar. I'm not saying it's literally the same, but it has this property that um, there are the, there's special frequencies, and the Higgs field acts like an environment for the other field, causing their frequencies to change. In somewhat more detail, it's a little bit as though if the Higgs field were not there, the fields would all be kind of floppy and they wouldn't 
have preferred frequencies at all. They would be they they would tend to vibrate um, they would tend to vibrate the way um, a floppy string does. Just sort of however you want to vibrate it, that that's how it'll that's how it will fluctuate. That's how it will wave. But if you can somehow make the 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 the, the string or the or, or whatever the fabric is that you want to make ripple, if you make it stiffer in some way, you may be able to get it to vibrate at particular frequencies. Um, and that's essentially what we do with a guitar string by fixing its ends. If the if if the guitar string were taken off the guitar, it doesn't have any special frequency. But you put it on the guitar and you fix its ends, you tighten it up. Now it has a special frequency. Well, what the Higgs field does is different from that. It's as though the environment itself could make a guitar, uh, could could uh, tune up a guitar. So what the Higgs field is doing is it's essentially it's stiffening the other fields, making it harder for them to vibrate and making it so that when they do vibrate, they vibrate at a higher frequency. And the higher frequency then in turn corresponds to a larger mass for the wavicles when they vibrate. So the electron field in the absence of the Higgs field would be not much different from the uh, electric field. It would just have waves in it that just you know could be made, uh, but could have arbitrarily low frequencies. When the Higgs field is present, the electron field stiffens up. And now, no matter how you, uh, if you, if you strike it somehow in, in a particle physics experiment, it will vibrate, but it won't vibrate below a certain frequency. And that minimum frequency, that resonant frequency that it has, has come from the Higgs field. The vibrations of the electron field, meanwhile, are electrons. And the frequency with which the electron vibrates, again, determines how much energy it has, and that in turn determines how much mass it has. And so the Higgs field through that somewhat elaborate set of steps, from the Higgs field to the frequency of the electron field, to the energy of vibration of the electron, to the mass of the electron, that is how the Higgs field does its job. And you notice it has nothing to do with motion. Yeah. It's not slowing anything down. It's not acting like, uh, it's not impeding motion or acting like drag. No, it's acting like the environment of a guitar. It's changing the frequencies with which the universe vibrates. That's the real story. <laughs>